this episode, we're talking about drinking games, in case you couldn't already tell. <laughs> These may not be traditional tabletop games, but they're played on the table, mostly. So let's talk about them. All right. So first we should say we should spin our wheel on the table. Again, this is a roulette wheel given to Kitty by Spencer's grandmother. It was with... given to Spencer by his grandmother. All right. With All shot... right. So, and, and just to describe what this ten. is. Ten? Ten. So the shot glasses ten have... Ten black. I am ten black. So I'm going to... I have a shot glass with this, which has um, wonderful grape juice in it. And <laughs> the way you do this is you spin this wheel and it lands on this. And it's like, oh, you have to take the shot. Amazingly, we have not actually had a duplicate yet. We because, haven't, yeah. yeah. The shot glasses are numbered. Yeah, the not, shot glasses are numbered. They either have two or three of the numbers on them. So we split them amongst ourselves to make sure they had an equal distribution of numbers. That meant that Fletcher got six shot glasses. Where, each with two numbers. Each with two numbers. Where Kitty and I got five glasses, each with two numbers and one with or two or three numbers. So I'm going to take my drink of grape juice. Delicious and nutritious. And let's, <laughs> let's talk drinking games. Now, right. we played we played a couple games today. Yeah. Uh, so we just talked about Red Dragon Inn, mm-hmm. um, which is a board game about drinking games. But you don't have to actually drink. It, it actually, it's, it's true. And it's quite fun. It's actually... It is pretty fun. I'd play that again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's not... I wouldn't give it a, like a super skill and tactical game. I mean, it's... um. Almost a drafting game where you have your hand and you get to choose if you're going to discard, keep your hand. You draw up to seven every turn. You can choose to discard. Yeah. So at the beginning of your turn, you can discard as many cards from your hand and draw new ones. You get an action every turn. And that action can be so-and-so loses a fortitude. So-and-so takes a drink. You also give a drink card to everybody at the start of your turn. You're going to flip well, you get up to that drink choose card. One drink card. Right. Unless well, you have a special power. Right. You Well, you take one drink card and you can take the, that drink card. You don't see what it is. You give it face down to the other players. Sometimes you can give multiple drink cards if you spend more gold. And you ultimately you lose if you run out of gold so you can't drink anymore. Your fortitude is lower than your alcohol level. Mm-hmm. And your alcohol level can increase. Your fortitude can decrease. Uh, the base game comes, I think, with four different characters and a number of cards. And there are... Uh, I, I like six to eight expansions for this thing. There's a lot of expansions. Wow. For it. Yeah, there's a ton. So you're adding more characters, you're adding more rules. But as we mentioned, it's kind of like, you know, D&D between the scenes. Like It's true. Yeah. So you get to do gambling where you play a gambling card and everyone has a chance to play their gambling or cheating card back. It's like a fun meta game within the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it really is. Yeah, the gambling part's like just like this meta gambling part of it. Uh-huh. So as your action, you can play a gambling card, and then everyone else has a chance to play so many other cards. I got really screwed by the gambling cards because I had like five of them in my hand, and I kept trying to play them, and Chris kept being like, nope, done. Yep. I'm meditating. Leave me alone. Because I was playing the wizard. <laughs> I was playing an illusionist. I was playing the healer. Yep. I don't remember what Sydney was playing. The Sydney thief. was the thief. The or thief. Rogue. Yeah. rogue. Yeah. So she could I just kind of steal our money and, you know, slip in different traps. She and was stuff. the best at She like, had a lot of cheating yeah. cards. Yeah. I had a lot of cheating cards too, but I didn't draw them until later. Yeah. yeah. I had, like, pretty much no cheating cards, but I had the most cards of, like, nope, I'm talking about religion. I'm saving this money <laughs> for charity. I am, I don't know, whatever. Like, I had a lot of ways to get out of gambling. Yeah. True. Yeah. So if you're not a big drinker, and actually a number of people on Twitter, so I put this out on Twitter saying, hey, and and I'm going to do this actually probably going forward for every episode. I'm going to post on Twitter on our podcast on BoardGameGeek, our podcast page. I'm going to let you know ahead of time, I'm looking for feedback on our next episode. So our next episode is going to be on Kickstarter. Uh, We'll tweet about it. We're going to talk about, well, we won't talk about it, but we'll announce it at the end of this episode and right now. Um, (laughs) Yeah. But keep an eye out on our podcast page on Board Game Geek because if you want to be have your input in on the next topic, that's where you can do that. Uh, of course, you can always send us feedback on the current topic, and we'll cover that during our off-topic segment of the next episode. But um, there were a number of people that replied back with, I don't really drink, or I never drink, or we're not drinkers. 
And it was actually surprising to me the number of people that responded in that way. Red uh, Red Dragon Inn is a game where you can still play it, but it's not a drinking game per it's se. It's not a drinking game. Yeah. You, you don't you can have play to that drink game and have fun. at yeah. all. Yeah. There, it is a sober game about drinking. Yep. So I, 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 but I do want to talk about actual drinking games. So these are like you're in college or maybe out of college or maybe you're 40 something and you're like, let's pretend we're in college. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's all kinds of reasons why you might want to do this. And so, so we came from a lot of different backgrounds. Yeah. So I um, went to NIU, Northern Illinois University, and um, just being there was kind of, you had to play some drinking games. You had a very different college experience. Yeah, Fletcher. so I went to Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas. It's a, it's a small private school, and despite its name, it's not religious, <laughs> um, but the only drinking games that I really played were flip. Flippy cup, flip cup, yep. mm-hmm. and beer pong. Yeah. And I went and to Western Michigan University, which... He's wearing his shirt I'm today. I'm wearing my shirt today. Complete coincidence, to be honest. Um, we believe him. No, true. Honestly. <laughs> uh, where I actually did not drink in college almost ever. Like, with my college days, I drank on New Year's Eve and my birthday, and that was it. Any other day, I did not drink. Even after I was pledging a fraternity my senior year, I still never drank. I was designated buyer. I was I did not drink. <laughs> <laughs> so like you're old enough to buy the alcohol. Yeah, you could buy the alcohol. Um, so by the I, way, I feel like I had a very typical Midwest college experience, and you had a very typical kind of Southern Western. I don't know if I would call my experience typical, but it's just my experience. Yeah. So I'm, I'll go ahead and say I was typical. Yeah. Now <laughs> let's talk about flippy cup and beer con- beer pong beer pong. <laughs> For a moment. Because these are what I consider dexterity drinking games. I'm also going to lump quarters in there. And quarters. So, and, so, Flippy Cup, you have an X number of cups on the table. Usually... Um, one per person. One per person. And you're going to drink that, and then you have to put the cup base down, and you're trying... No, um, sorry. Lip down. Lip mm-hmm. down. And you're trying to flip it Over from the, the edge. edge of the table. Yeah. And you're trying to flip it so it lands base down. And mm-hmm. as soon as you do, the next player does the same thing. They drink their drink and then put the cup upside down and try to flip it up. Once, So you're playing team. So you have one side against another side. The first team that gets done. Think of like a long rectangular table. Like long rectangular table. And it's like a relay race yes. down to the end. Definitely. Yep. And then that team wins. Yeah. Yay! And d- depending on whatever particular rules the other team might have to drink more or whatever the case is. You've already drank a whole bunch and it's about time to flip the wheel again. Um, So that is Flippy Cup. It is very fun. A lot of, I went to a competition a couple weeks, not a couple weeks ago, a couple years ago and played this at a bar and red 12. 12. I don't have red 12. That's me. I, right. Amazing, we don't have any repeats still yet. <laughs> I know. All right, so I Dr. Cola, it. Dr. Cola, <laughs> um, so which was very fun. They had a ton of people playing this game, and they were actually it was a tournament. So if you got to the end, you won, you advanced to the next tournament. So that's one very dexterity based game. Uh, it does tend to put a lot of extra beer on the table, so you might want to play this outside at picnic tables and stuff. <laughs> um, beer pong. Who wants to describe beer pong? I played a lot of beer pong. All right, go for it. Um, beer pong, you have your cups set up kind of like bowling pin style. Yep. Where they're at one end of a long table and you're throwing a ping pong ball trying to get it into the cup. Once it gets into the cup, that player has to take their shot of beer, basically. Um, this is typically Sometimes played Sometimes it's red... in that same cup and yeah. hopefully not. Hopefully yeah. it's on the side. Normally, <laughs> normally in the same cup. Normally Almost. in the same cup, which is super gross. Don't do, don't play. You have a cup oh my water gosh, to wash you should really not off, be like. a preschool teacher because <laughs> if you think that's gross, you have not seen gross. So you're saying preschool um, kids are more disgusting than college kids. I just had my nose, like somebody else's nose blown into my own hair. Let's go back to beer pong. (laughs) So beer pong. um, You throw a ping pong ball into a cup. They drink the beer out of that cup and that cup is gone. And you have a couple of different kind of reshuffles where you can move the cups into different positions where you're trying to throw the ping pong ball across the table. 
But basically, it's, you know, you throw the ball, you drink out of the cup, and whoever finishes the cup on the other side of the table wins. Yep. Now, there are some nuances to this. If you hit it into a cup without hitting the rim, then they have to drink two cups. Um, if it bounces, then they can bat it away. Um, and there's, like, the re-rack rules and things like that. That They're all kind of, like, I think, rules. is the most, re like, house rule re-racking is, is yeah. the most difficult to keep track of. Yeah. But mostly it's just a standing across the table. And it can be any things. table. Ping pong table is ideal as far as size and stuff. they do make stuff. beer pong tables. Yeah, they, they make, do. Yep. Which are a little, they're about half as wide as ping pong tables. They're right. narrow. They're very narrow. It's almost like if you go to Sam's Club or Costco and buy like one of those narrow um, plastic tables. Yep. Like you would, I, I'm a church kid. So you think of them as like, a, you know, the long narrow church tables. Yep. Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> It's the size of a normal table, but it's almost half half the width. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's and that's beer pong, and it's actually a very fun game. Um, it is fun. I don't know that anyone would ever play this with like Coke or something. No, no. But you have to be a little bit drunk to yeah. feel like it's worth it. It's yeah. really not a fun game, otherwise. Yeah. It's 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 about the social aspect. You normally play in pairs, so there's normally two of you, two yeah. ver- two v two. What it actually reminds me most of is bags, where yes. you're playing, yeah. um, like, in the backyard, throwing bean bags across the yard at each other. Yeah. So, all right, Fletcher, you want to take the last one? I don't know what the last one was, but what we're talking about. Quarters. 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 Have you played quarters? I've not played quarters. What? I, I right. know, so I know a little bit about it, but I've not played it. All right, I've only played this game maybe twice in my entire life. So, again, College Kitty. Tell us about quarters. <laughs> oh, I don't know how I became the voice of the tip- typical college experience. I have but, an idea. Um, Where'd you go again? I went to NIU. Okay, that's Nor- right. Yeah. Northern also, Illinois University. Fletcher and I are literally computer programmers in our day jobs, so you win. You guys are nerds. Yeah. <laughs> you were a meteorologist major. <laughs> I did. I did. Oh, get by the my... way, before we do this, spin this because All right. I want to think. All right. We're going to spin it. I need to pick up the yeah. ball first. All right, let's try this. So again, spinning, spinning, spinning. Highly recommend going the other way. You check out our YouTube channel if you have not <laughs> stopped listening by now. Twenty-eight. So Twenty-eight black. Oh, it's me. All right. All right. So now, tell us about quarters. Quarters is a game you play. It's a dexterity game where you try to bounce a quarter off the table into your glass. And that's about it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> okay, so what's the drinking aspect of this? Um, I don't actually know if the quarter bounces into your glass, then you drink it, or if the you, quarter bounces into your glass and you make everyone else drink. We're way too nerdy to talk about this game. Yeah, we really are. Yeah, it, it, there's like there's a finance thing to this because honestly, of quarters involved. If you're gonna play quarters, you might as well be playing flippy cup or beer pong. I felt like it kind of fell in the middle of yeah. those two games. Aren't you supposed to like bounce a quarter off the table into a cup? Yeah, yeah. and if it hits the cup, though, that's that's where I'm kind of lost. As it goes into the cup, and then what happens? Yeah. Are you supposed to drink it? Or are you supposed to make someone else drink? I think if you if you get I in the you cup, you should else. have to drink. Or no, That's, someone else should have to drink. Yeah. Someone yeah. else should have to drink. But I we're gonna make up these think, rules. If you, I don't know. Yeah. I feel a well, little bit like we're just honestly. And all right, so this might be a little backpedaling from the fact that we have no <laughs> idea how quarter <laughs> drinking game works. But that's how most drinking games works: is you make it up. You just decide. It's like, okay, we're going to do this, and if this happens, you drink. Speaking about making it up, we played Kings yes. as the last game. Hey, right. Kings is and not a made-up game. taught us how to play. Yeah. Let's transition Kings. into card game drinking games yes. card to save games. ourselves from trying to explain quarters. Yeah, exactly. Kings, I've actually played. Kings is also called Circle of Death. If you Google either one of them, that will give you rules. The rules that I played by were very specific. It had king. You draw a king out of the deck. You make a rule. If you draw a queen, there's so many rules. There's way too many. There's rules from what? Ace to nine. Ace to, ace ace to nine. eight. Eight? Eight? Eight and well, down. Eight and down okay. is its own rule. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. nine, you have to rhyme. Yeah. Nine is rhyme. Ten is 
categories. Jacks are if um, you thumbs, thumbs. Queens are questions. Kings are rules. Aces King, you make are... It a rule. Aces are waterfalls. Yeah. I had oh, to teach Fletcher yeah. and Chris what a waterfall we had was. No clue. So if you get a waterfall, you start drinking, and then the person to your left cannot stop drinking until you do. So it kind of goes, you know, down and down like a waterfall. Like a waterfall. Yeah. Um, kings, you get to pick. You can either pick a card that you draw, or you can just make up a rule for you cannot say the letter S in the rest of the game. Which was a great example that we never actually done because did because that would have been a really hard yeah. rule to follow. It reminds me of Z an episode better. of Gilmore Girls where they couldn't say a word like it. That's a different or podcast. The. <laughs> Although you, you I would do a say, Gilmore Girls podcast. With I you would love point. to do a Gilmore Girls podcast. Um, but you can make up whatever rule you want at King. Um, and yeah, right. it's just every every card you draw is a little bit different. You put the card under the tab of a pop can, like a can of beer. Yeah. And when or the can, can. It's a, or it's pop a, can. It's a pop can of beer. <laughs> yes. A can with a tab on top. So whenever you put a, a card under the tab, whoever pops the tab has to yeah. chug that beer. So as soon as you hear the hiss, I think ours went to did Chris. A, like thirteen, about thirteen cards. It was about, about thirteen halfway, cards. Yeah, about which is about a quarter a suit, of the way, a suit worth of deck. Yeah. yeah, quarter of the way through the deck, it goes to someone to chug the beer. Yep. So and then there's also we played Irish poker to start off with, and this is because Fletcher's girlfriend's like. You're doing a podcast on drinking games. You got to talk about Irish poker. I'm like, what's Irish <laughs> poker? Yeah, I had never heard of it yeah. before. I had only lo- ever heard of Indian poker. Yeah. Well, for the record, Irish poker apparently is a real game with real tournaments yes. and real competition. It's like and Omaha. Such. Yeah. The version we were playing was you'd put four cards face down in front of you, and the first card you had to guess whether or not this card was red or black. So it's a fifty-fifty that you're going to mm-hmm. drink. Most drinking games, again, there's no real thinking involved. It's just flip a coin. And as I say flip a coin, we're going to roll a ball. We're going to spin the ball or spin the... If you are correct, then you make other people drink. If you're incorrect, then you have to drink. 29 29. black. 29 black. Not me. me. I think it's dead. It was me. Oh. Uh All right. Uh Spin Spin again. again. All right. Keep talking, though. This could be really bad at the end. So... On the second card... We're just going to go with this. 24, black. That's me. All right. All right, drink it. More Dr. Cola. Um, <laughs> on the second card, you had to guess the... What were you guessing on the second card? Second card was... It was a number. Over or under? No, no, no. no. The, the third card was over or under. No, the third card was between... No. No, because you Inside had to get... or outside. No. Oh, right. The second card... It was over or under. But over under over oh, under the first card. Yeah, yes. over under the first card. Yeah. Yes, yes. So the second card you have to guess is it higher or lower than the first card? Again, if you're right, other people drink. If you're wrong, you drink. The third one is between or outside. So inside or outside the first two cards. Right. The same thing. If inside you're right, inside was inclusive. Inclusive. So inside included the two cards that were already up, and then right or the wrong. Card. Yeah. And the last card was suit. really just kind of a it was whatever. Suit. Yeah, you yeah. get to pick hearts, diamonds, spades, or clubs. Yeah. Now at that point, though, you can see everyone else's cards on the table, so you can kind of say, "Well, my odds are there's not a lot of hearts on the table, so I'm going to say hearts." But again, the same thing. And this isn't poker. I don't think it's Irish. But I ended up drinking a lot. It was oh, it was so much so- drinking. I actually really like BS. Which stands yes. for bologna sandwich. Bologna sandwich. If yep. you're listening on the internet. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, too. so you get to put down your cards and you get to put down um, two twos, three threes, four fours, whatever down. it is. They're face down. You get to choose. So you're bluffing potentially. You're bluffing. Potentially bluffing. So if you have two twos, you get to put them down. Somebody says BS, they turn them up. And if it's two twos, they lose, and if it's not two twos, you lose, and so you have to drink the drink if you lose or pick up the cards. Yep. The, well, either the rule way, of the game is to get rid of all your cards. Yeah, either you way, get rid of everything. you have to pick the cards. Yeah. But if you were lying, you pick up the cards and drink. 
Yes. So it becomes harder and harder to lie. Yeah. <laughs> and there are so many drinking card games. And I think the, the real common denominator of drinking card games are super easy to learn. Mm-hmm. Although the just, kings, but, but <laughs> just enough. But only one person has to know the rules. And when you pull something up, that person says, "Oh, you got a queen, so you have to ask a question." You know, so you can like it. It becomes one of those things. It's a very social and interactive game. Now, there's an entire class of drinking games that have nothing to do with actually being a game, and that is the class of. I'm watching a TV show, listening to a podcast, and every time they do something, every time Chris uses a word that's not actually a word, drink. And I do that a lot. And Kitty's spinning the wheel again. Ten? ten? Um, black ten. Black ten. I've already drank that. All right. Every time Chris says something that is absurd, because I listen to my own podcast, I'm like, that wasn't a word. Also wasn't what I was thinking. But... <laughs> So you could make that into a drinking 20, game. 24? 24, 24, 24 black. Or 13. Or 16. What was that? 16 red. I have we'll neither call it 16 of 16 red. It was me. All right. It, when, you, when you look at those kinds of games, those are just games where you're trying to get drunk. Gilmore Girls. Every time they have witty banter, you drink. You're going to be wasted by the epi- yeah. end of the episode. We have a really good drinking game for Pride and Prejudice, the BBC version. <laughs> I didn't even know there was one, but go Oh, ahead. my God. With Colin Firth. Okay. All the girls get on the podcast and get with me because Colin Firth's BBC Pride and Prejudice is so much better than the one with Kira Knightley, which we pretend does not exist. It doesn't exist. But we have a whole set of rules, and if you want them... Email tabletopgametalk at gmail.com and I will send you back all of our best rules. In the subject line, put attention kitty. Literally, it is a six hour show. And whenever Darcy stares at Lizzie, whenever Jane is too romantic, whenever somebody mentions uh, Catherine de Berg, like there are rules. I love that one. And I also love the Star Wars drinking game. Whenever a good guy wears white and a bad guy bad guy wears black, you take one drink. And whenever a good guy wears white, no, good no, guy wears black. Other way around. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever a good guy wears white and a bad guy, no, other way around again. Oh my gosh. Damn it. Chris, Again, explain it. email. All right, we're gonna beep this. Apparently, uh, <laughs> whatever a good guy bad. wears black. I did not ever say guy, the f word. You did <laughs> not. Um, that was and, my goal for but, this podcast. Then, <laughs> whenever you go against stereotype, you have to drink double. How's that? True. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, for explaining that for me. <laughs> <laughs> we, all right. But also, Chris is the one who's refilling my glass this whole time. For the record. Um, Kitty is much more enjoyable when she's drinking uh, <laughs> Sprite. When she's drinking Sprite, she's just being a very happy person. I'm a fun person. Yeah. Um, I'm a fun person all the time. Have I been endorsing Sprite and Dr. Cola and grape juice this entire time? So Sprite's a brand name. Dr. Yes. Cola, I'm pretty sure, is not. All right. We're um, going to call it white drink. White, I, white bubbly drink. White bubbly drink. Um, carbonated. You're, you're drinking Purple non-carbonated. Yes. Lemon okay. lime soda. Well, for those people who are listening, <laughs> they realize, like, you've been talking for an hour and five minutes now. And now it might be time to stop. Yeah. And What on earth is happy salmon? <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> happy salmon. It's in the show notes. This is a game that Sean Kelly, uh, one of our patrons, a co-host of the Gaming and BN po- BS podcast... And this is a game I will be playing with them this coming weekend at GaryCon. Happy Salmon. Is that in Gary, Indiana? No. It Gross. is Gary Gygax. So it's in oh, Lake okay. Geneva, Wisconsin. Fair enough. Um, 32 red? 32 red. Not me. Or 15 black. Uh, also not. Oh, that is me. I will take that. Oh, drink it. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Happy Salmon is kind of a... Uh, I, I honestly I have not played this yet, but I really want to because it involves a whole lot of um, you have to make salmon fa- things with your hands. What is so a this salmon is, thing? With so your hands? so you can do like a high five, or you can do like fist bump. I, I'm making these up because I honestly don't know, but you do some kind of thing with somebody else. And a happy salmon is you're like is me. making a fish thing with your hands. 
And it's not necessarily a drinking game, but I'm going to turn it into a drinking game this coming weekend. So I, I really wanted to mention it. Um, <laughs> on that note, I think we've gone too long. And if we haven't lost all of our listeners... <laughs> Listen to another episode. Yeah. Please. I'm sorry what? that I'm in this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll have you back another time. If you've made it this far, I'm hoping... 22 or 18. You'll. I don't have one of those. Nope. I, I, I'm hoping that you'll stick around for our next episode. We're going to talk about Kickstarter. And I'm actually going to read the outro as <laughs> we keep spinning this wheel until we're out of things 30, to go. 33 or 1? Um, I'm a 33, so I'm going to have Drink more grape it. juice. Drink <laughs> it. Um, I've never done this part before. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Welcome to the intro with me. <laughs> and remember, we love your feedback. So consider leaving us an iTunes review or email us with comments <laughs> or questions at tabletopgametalk at gmail.com. We would love to hear your feedback on drinking games or your experiences with them. I Do I drink again? <laughs> All right. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can also reach us on Facebook at slash Tabletop Game Talk Podcast or at Twitter at Tabletop Game TLK because there's not enough letters in that in t- for me to spell it talk. You can also reach us directly at Game Master Krish, Krish, Chris, <laughs> <laughs> Josh is Blonde, and Kitten L. <laughs> and if you like what you hear, and oh God, I hope that that's. <laughs> Spread the word by sharing or liking our posts. Finally, a huge thanks to our patrons. I have to concentrate on this. Emil Jiljam, Lucas Hartso, Charles Finch, Jade Pedersen, Shane Poole, Micah Hoban, Jade... Oh, hold on, I need to start the music. That's never happened before. <laughs> <laughs> Jaquin Hagar, Trevor Olson, Rudy Liu, Sam from New York, Brian Arnold, Joss Arntz, Michael Oltz, C. Marie, Daniel Shepard, Sean Kelly... John Merkel, Jason Strong, and Joseph Lee. If you'd like to support us via Patreon, you can find us at tabletopdamecot.com. Click on the Support Us page. Until next week, when we talk about Kickstarter, keep playing games and having fun. Good night. Thanks, guys. (laughs) Thanks for listening. Are we recording now? You're not seeing this YouTube. Uh, this is the most silly we've ever been. Grape juice closer to the microphone. This is okay. Yeah, you have too much of the screen, and I don't have enough of the screen, so that's a problem for me. Uh, I don't know. Chris I don't is like, like it. all about the screen. There we go. Editing video sucks. Read the first line for me real quick. Hello, and welcome to episode 30 of Tabletop Game Talk, a show where we talk about tabletop games of all types. I'm one of your hosts. Josh. Josh. (laughs) (laughs) I'm one of your hosts, Josh. Better? Yes. (laughs) I'm not sure about hosts, so that's apparently a word I have a hard time saying. I feel like you just include this all on YouTube, even though you tell me you don't. Uh, Should I just open another bottle of champagne so in yes. case I run out of drinks, you can yes. fill me up from a off camera? <laughs> off camera? There is no off camera for you. Yes. Well, no, like Everyone's I hand camera. you my glass and you fill it. Over you there. are always front and center because every time she looks at the like all the podcast stuff, it's just like Kitty's right front and center. Right. We we are really loud today because <laughs> I'm actually going Drunk. below the fives on all of us. But first, holy. Crap, hold on. Chris has to pee. <laughs> All right, YouTube. You're still here. Behind the scenes, Chris has to pee. Chris will probably cut this out of the episode. Yeah. Because I'm probably going to pee after him. Because why not? As long as he's taking a break. You keep drinking. I feel like you're not quite at our level yet. I'm a big guy. <laughs> Right. I'm reading. What am I reading? Number <laughs> <laughs> <Five or> twenty-four. <laughs> oh and that will be our last episode <laughs> ever.